Well, this is Zenith Aircraft Company and we're in Mexico, Missouri. And the factory's been here now going on, I think, 27 years. We came out here in the summer of 1992. As those, those of you that know Zenith know that my dad, Chris Heinz, was the designer of these, of these airplanes. And then we started in 92 to just kind of expand on that, be in the center of this country. And that's why we're located in Mexico, Missouri. And so it's been a really good base for us to, to manufacture airplane kits. And so that said, we're a relatively compact facility. We get a lot done right here. We don't need to spread out where we're doing, you know, wing assemblies, fuselage assemblies, and so forth, because we manufacture all the different parts and pieces. About 600 different parts we manufacture right here. So that's quite a few different, uh, quite a few different parts. And, uh, you know, we're a crew of about 18 of us in the shop. We do a lot of uh, advanced manufacturing now with CNC manufacturing. Um, most of our growth has been through the acquisition of new technology and new equipment. So rather than just hire more people to do stuff, uh, we, we find the technology that allow us to do, to do more and more. I'm even proud, I got half of my power here, solar. I've got solar panels on the roof right here. So it's kind of neat that we can, again, power a lot of our equipment with, uh, with solar. This being our latest kit, we really leverage that technology in, the, in this latest kit. Uh, final hole size match drilled parts. You take the parts they, and pleco them together and rivet them together. It really is that simple. Same with the instructions because everything has been, has been pre-drilled. You, you know, not to say you don't need instructions, but you barely need blueprints anymore because you're just putting things together. You're no longer figuring out you know how the part needs to be finished and so forth and the beauty of that is that it makes it more accessible for more people and so there's a lot of also a lot of built-in motivation because you can't spend two hours on this and not have something to show for it. Well we're here with the Stoll CH750 Super Duty and the Super Duty it's it's uh, it's like the name implies it's a Super Duty version of the Stoll CH701, uh, Stoll CH701 as well as a Stoll CH750, which we've been producing, well, the 701 since the 1980s and the 750 for the last uh, 12 years. And the Super Duty, it's kind of a non-light sport version of the same airplane. Uh, the wingspan is, is a little bit longer on the airplane to be able to carry more load and larger tail sections accordingly. And then we added a rear jump seat in the airplane because we could. And then on the front end, we've got a much larger engine as well, because again, because it's Super Duty, carry more, gives it more capability. Uh, the end panel is, uh, it gives you a lot of extra room in the cockpit. Uh, it's nice to be able to get in and out and not have to worry about an instrument panel in your way. But it's standard comes in the kit is a standard traditional panel, so that is an option to unpanel. So I don't want customers thinking you can only get it like this, you can get it with this traditional panel. Everybody believes that you know if you're flying a stole aircraft or flying in the bush, it has to be a tail dragger. Uh, there's advantages to a tail dragger and disadvantages to a tricycle. The advantage of R750 tricycle is you just don't have to worry about crosswind winds. Can you imagine going into a mountain strip, 500 foot, you have 30 knot crosswind in a tail dragger? You probably won't go in there or you might have problems. Whereas a 750 Super Duty, it's a tricycle, so you don't have to worry about those high crosswinds. Now on the short takeoff, what happens is we have an upside down stabilizer, so when you start adding a little bit of power, the fuselage is going to go down very quickly and then the slats are going to start to work very quickly. So you're actually working as a tail dragger right off the get-go because the nose is coming off very quickly. Got a wind right down the runway. Yep. So we're gonna line up here right on the center line. Okay. You said stick, stick all the way back. Stick all the way back. 
and then once we start moving, I'll bring the stick forward a little bit. Okay. There it goes. Wow. Unstuck at 29 miles an hour with great visibility. All right. Pretty cool. Awesome. Go ahead, fly it at your aircraft. Okay, my airplane. Fly it around for a bit. We'll do a turn to the left. Just notice uh, over the wing there. Very good visibility. That's Chris Hines' design uh, trademark he, when he brought out the 701 back in the 80s. He hated flying Cessnas and you couldn't see over the wing when you're in a turn. With a steep enough right bank, I can see over the right uh -huh. side too. Walk us through the landing a little bit. Okay, so what I like to do, I like to set up for uh, beam the numbers. Okay. Bring, lead off the power, airspeed. Deploy just about uh, five to 10 degrees of flaps and then start my descent. Okay. And then I'll deploy the rest of the flaps on final, which is a total of 15 degrees. And I'll play with pitch and power quite a bit to land short. Okay. Whereas most traditional airplanes, you uh, set up approach, approach speed, pitch angle and everything and you just maintain it, trim it out for that. Mexico traffic sprint well is based to final 418 Mexico. And once I turn final, I'll lower the rest of the flaps. I like to be somewhere in the 50s. Okay. When we get on short, short final, we'll probably be in the 40s. Okay. But at that point, I don't look at the airspeed. I just go mainly by feel. With a little wind on the nose, it should be a yeah. nice short landing. And we might try to uh, exaggerate a little bit, land just a little longer, so we're not trying to you know, spot landed or anything. Sure. So I just want to show you how you can uh, keep the nose off the ground if you're coming into a you know sandbar or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's working. It's a little turbulence right just there. Just a little. Uh, Zenith is a very rewarding place to work uh, in lots of ways. Uh, the reason is, is we all carry so many, wear so many different hats. And I love that because I don't get bored. I'll do some.